That was just down on C. Yeah, B yeah. sharp. That was B. Well, it's in between B and C. Oh, yeah, in between so B, B and C. Sharp. C flat. In between B and C. Yeah, it's low. Yeah. In between B and C. Got it. So do we do, do I play to start? Or? You're going to play every, uh, the happiest songs you know? Right. <laughs> Anything with Care Bears and it's a definite. Um, so the start is... Um, <coughs> I mean, it's not like, there's not, it doesn't have to be a schedule because you're chopping up all the way. No, no. no. We're going to be doing that. one big take. It doesn't okay. even, is that yours? Yeah. Oh, you do edit it? You do it. I, I edit it, like I'll cut out like I'll cut out the mic on the guitar okay. when you're not playing. So I'm gonna like, play it too and you guys are gonna be you're gonna be here to answer right when I'm done playing. Oh yeah, but as far as the take goes, it's beginning to end, like I won't stop and restart. Nothing's the talking to. Yeah, nothing's cut out. Okay, so it is like you're not gonna like go over there and I'm gonna play it and I'm gonna be like, okay, let's talk now. No, 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 we're not that formal. Oh, <laughs> shit. Uh, so how it starts is is uh just usually start. Hey, I'm Mike Trask. Welcome to Parkdale Podcast. Okay. And then you can not, and then just start playing or say the name of the song. Okay. And then we go from there. Try your mic, Dean, first. Mm, hello. Mm, over there. All right, all right. Thanks. Hello. 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 Hi. 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 Dean, you go again. I'm going to move all around and fucking generate and get shit on my feet and stuff. Bang things up here and all the podcasts. Hello, what do you provide? Six, seven, eight, nine, podcast. There we go. Okay. So, what are you doing this now? <laughs> so confused. It's already started. I'm playing jazz. Yep. So, uh, the, yeah, so I'm going to cut it in. Uh, yeah, so just uh, welcome to Parkville Podcast. Okay. I'm Mike Trask. This is my very, very happy song called it's my first song. Sunshine. First song you ever wrote. Uh, welcome to Parkdale Podcast. This is Mike Trask and Matt Keats here. Keith Allen. Hello. And uh, this is a song about uh, cell phones.
Yes. Uh, playing a song about yes. oh, cell, cell phones. Cell phones, cell phones yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, obligations. Obli yeah. Digital adulting. Digital obligations. Digital adulting. <laughs> yeah, adulting. Adulting. Digital. So, uh, welcome to uh, Parkdale Podcast, um, Episode 5. Mike Trask, Keith Allen, uh, Lloyd from Shuckley Studios. Uh, <laughs> who is that? <laughs> yeah, so um, we're, uh, we're sitting at Six Shepherdy. Um, we're excited because um, we got the boys to do a podcast, and I think they're very reluctant. I was going to get the out. out. <laughs> Especially with the, what's a podcast question before? <laughs> yeah, it's five minutes before we start. Question Keith it says, what's a podcast? Um, I, I just think they wanted out of it. And then we told them that they had to play songs, otherwise it'd be fucking boring. It'd <laughs> 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 be more boring with the songs. That's the... Oh, well, at least Charles <laughs> and I didn't mean, actually write my songs, but so. Well, it's not, it's not a sad one. <laughs> we'll get to that, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, welcome to Shepherd House. What's shaking? Uh, looks like uh, winter's hanging on. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> uh, it's like I, I, I asked Mother Earth the question. <laughs> <laughs> what's uh, what's shaking with you, man? That's, uh, that's about it. it. That's it? For me, yeah. We're like neighbors, eh? Or you live close to Shepherd? I do, yeah. And maybe 10 minutes. That won't go. And, uh, his first time here. Oh. First time in the doors, eh? Oh, what a jerk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like more like a, I just never You're busy. turned right yeah. at that fork. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then also, I, did, I didn't, well, I'm not, I have gates when there's gates here. And you're, you're right. Right? You got, you got well, a studio in Maryland Co. Confused more. Confused? Right. Yeah. We're busy, yeah. Busy, stuff. confused, baseball's on. Well, yeah, it's for Saturdays I would try to watch the Blue Jays tonight. Yeah, no, I know. You just, but, tried, to, you just tried to pull it out of your phone <laughs> as we were going into the podcast. It's like, I think I'll watch the game. <laughs> but that's what's happening with me, all that. So, and so you got a studio in Maryland Co. What's the name of the studio? MRC. MRC. Memorable Cook Recording Company. Memorable Cook Recording Company. And so that keeps you busy? <coughs> For sure, yeah. So far it has. Yeah, it's been a good year. It has been. Good. Uh, three years. Good three years. But it really, last year was a really good year, right? I mean, uh, you picked up Music Producer of the Year. Oh, yeah. I did, yeah. Or Music Your Best Awards. Yeah, that was mainly, uh, it was a few albums released last year, I think. It was a good year, yeah. Well, we tracked most of those the year before, actually. But, uh, yeah, we've been lucky there. How many, so, well, congrats on that. Yeah, um, it was cool. Yeah, and, and I won uh, Music Business of the Year, so, yeah, no worries, man. Congrats here, too. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, you did win, yeah. So, uh, yeah, neighbors winning together. It's cool, yeah. uh, It's cool to win. It's good to win. It's good, right? Yeah. Like, uh, I remember one season, who played uh, softball? And Dad said he was the coach, and he said, "When we when we win, whenever we win, we're gonna go for ice cream, okay?" And I said, "That's awesome." <laughs> and then we never won once, <laughs> and we never he never took us anywhere. And so it was cool the whole team, the whole team. And uh, we never won once. We got uh, the playoffs. It was a real playoffs. We got in the playoffs no matter what, and we lost the whole playoffs. And so it was cool to now like. 34 wins something. Did you have ice cream after? We never did had that, ice did cream. That come off? No, I mean after after music producer of the year, did you get some? I bought this sweater. Oh, that is a nice sweater. I drove and I bought this sweater the day I won. Yeah, we were missing you in, in Care Academy at the awards uh, show. I had sessions at the studio that weekend. But managed to get this sweater. Yeah, you liar. Baseball was on, wasn't it? <laughs> no, no, no. I had some of them in. I think it was in. Some of them was in. But uh, yeah, it was on. Cool. Well, congrats on that, man. Yeah. You've, uh, you know, you guys have been uh, slinging away and, and, and uh, producing records out there. Actually, I just spoke to uh, to um, uh, Josh yesterday. Oh yeah. Josh, uh, 
Peters. Yeah, Peters. Yeah, I, so I wanted to play a track on uh, the new radio show, um, uh, Maritime Melting Pot, 107.9, Tantamar. That's awesome. That's a good so, uh, And uh, like, Josh is funny, eh? Because he's like, uh, I think he's like, fun strange, and I want to, you know, like, play his shit and right. like, get on the duty. When are you going to come do a show? I'm thinking that uh, tattooing was the first oh, yeah. love, and then just put a record together. And, yeah, uh, for sure. I think it was more for him, it was a dream of it to do an album. And uh, he worked like really hard on that. Really it's hard on that record. It's, uh, it's, I like it. It's a, it's a good record. It's, it's, uh, it's all over the place. Yeah. And, it, yeah. And, I, and, and with the sound. Uh-huh. In, in production of it, right? Like right. It's, and it's, then you got those piano parts. Right. Or one, or like, and then you know, you can hear talking in the background, and like, right. I, I just like the feel of it. It reminds right. me of like some of my, like, Willie and the Family Live, like it's got this, For sure, you know. That was the, he's knowledgeable about what he wanted to try to do. Or sorry, he's knowledgeable enough that he knew what he wanted to try to do. And a lot of different genres, eh? So, I, I mean. Yeah, and uh, he hired like a, whole bunch of really incredible players. Yeah. The album is full of the project of some of the best players. Well I think that's why too he's like, Deke man, you know that that uh, record <laughs> is like I, I can't I can't really come and play that right. record. It's a bunch of guys, dude, right? I was like, well just get them together, man. Yeah. But uh, he's like, yeah, I just, I just play guitar. Man. So right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, player. And I mean I've been into your I've I've been into your studio. Um I, I don't know how you get Piano there, but anyway, that's a Oh, uh, Max Keeneside from uh, BEI brings a piano in his pickup truck. And he, <laughs> that was real piano and he there, reels right? it down and he tunes it and, and he holds come to any session. Max is from uh, BEI, like a young guy. Or, it must be a tiny piano? No, well, it's a. Uh, because that's just a shed, right? Your, your, the studio is a... Well, no, it's a recording studio, but it's, well, it's 25 by 25. Well, we want to talk about the size. And uh, more than enough room for multiple pianos. It's a full-size brand. But in this case, he brought a uh, apartment-sized piano. Apartment-sized? Uh, yeah. Getting all my shit, man. <laughs> but it's a, so it's an apartment-sized piano from the late 60s. And uh, he owns two of them, and he brings whichever one he has. Uh, tuned up at the time because he's also like he's uh, quite the player, right? Well, he's a piano restorer in PEI, and uh, he traveled his entire life playing uh, swing festivals, yeah, like that ragtime and stuff rag he does time yeah, in the United States. That's cool. And he, uh, so in PEI, he has a, ha a, a workshop and he restores pianos from 1700, and, and he brings his piano and he tunes it as he plays and cool and uh, that's kind of his thing so that's how that specific piano got on that specific album but uh there's many, there's other albums with the piano that we have in the studio had in the studio at the time too okay cool so, um yeah cause the, i mean when i looked i mean it's a pretty cool spot uh, but yeah it's actually the, the biggest live room uh except for the class here the biggest live room around here for, no, for, for no, 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 for in probably in Brunswick for a recording studio. Really? Yeah, it's quite a, I don't know how many studios you've been, but it's quite a, Not many, it's, quite a <laughs> it's quite a good size live room, 20, 25 by 22. Cool, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm probably thinking more of the, the control room or whatever the hell you call it. <coughs> Small room. control room. Yeah. yeah, and so, okay, enough about Josh, just, he, I, I offered the podcast and he didn't so we're done with that. Right. So, <laughs> this, but the studio. This podcast would be a lot of buzzing <laughs> sounds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I still want to talk, touch on the studio. Okay. Um, uh, your, how many albums do you put out from, from there? I couldn't really say off the top, but. Uh, ballpark. Baseball. Uh, park. 11. Okay. No idea. I know I don't really. Well, I'll write that. You know, I'll write that. Um, I don't know. Okay, cool. Yeah, a number of them. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, I mean, I walked in there, um, and I was like, this isn't like any other studio I've seen. Um, can you tell us a bit about, so it's real to real? 
Essentially, a real burial is, yeah. I, I, I took some photos and I've, I've been saving them, and maybe we'll, uh, we'll put them out uh, when we launch the podcast. Yeah. On social media. Uh, it's, it's quite something. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, there is only one other machine similar to yours east of Montreal, and Joel Plaskin has that? Uh, I'm in the ballpark here, right? Like, or, no, there's uh, another studio, another guy named uh, Tim Jim Baker. He has a little studio outside of Halifax, but it's not what you'd call an active commercial studio. Uh, I, got, I, got, I got Tim Jim on Facebook there. Oh, and so Tim Jim did uh, so he a had couple a, albums. Okay. But uh, it's, I'm not, I don't want to insult Tim Jim. Maybe more of a, seems like maybe more of a passion project for him. Right. And Joel has a different machine, but a two inch 16 track tape machine is, is kind of the essence of what it is. So, so Joel has one and we have one, but. Um, but they're hard to find. Yeah. And uh, generally speaking, we're the only ones who mix uh, off of the tape on such a, on such a consistent, and is that that's that's how you record everything? It's not yeah, digital. It's yeah, all done old school. No computer in there anymore. We took the computer yeah. up last year. Cool. You know, okay. because after two years, it just wasn't enough uh, projects to warrant investing in, in both. Okay, well, uh, Most of the projects are all to analog, so that's where we ended up going. I don't know much about that shit, right. but I was like, whoa, this is different, man. I've been to some studios, you know. Um, and nothing like that, right? right. So I mean, all that's it's all done by hand, and like you know that big tower with all the nuts. <laughs> Even in the I was like, holy fuck, this is work. It's not. It's, it's like I mean, you walk into a studio now, right? It's a, it's a computer it's a thing, right? And yeah. so it's I was just like, what the fuck? I took a bite. And it's just funny in the little control room. I couldn't get back far enough to take a picture right. of of the tower and like. You know, yeah. that uh, old old school looking stuff. You tech is above it. You'll have to just believe me. Yeah. Right. Right. And so um, people don't do that. Why are you doing that? Um, you want to make life harder? No. I'm just, uh, it's really, uh, I just like the sound of it. That's it, right? Yeah, pretty much. I guess. Well, I'm a fan. Me too. And I don't know shit about that, but it's fucking. I, can, I do. It's a warmer. The analog is a warmer sound. Well, I, yeah, I, I, I tend to gravitate towards like older records. I mean, yeah. that's just you know, and, and that's the sound like that Josh record and uh, you yeah. know, some other that come from out from from that studio. It's uh, a lot of the stuff now sounds fake. Well, it's just it's like so compressed. Like we were talking when you were looking when you're showing me the wave files. Yeah. And they just look like a solid block. Yeah. Because everything is, there's no. Why? There's no dynamic range. People are scared. Range. There's no dynamic range in music anymore. Oh, yeah. fuck, who's that? Who's over there? <laughs> hey, there's somebody else here. here. I've been sitting here for half an hour. I've got one word in. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm still wondering what a podcast is. <laughs> Please no one know. actually answered the question. <laughs> it's like, so what is this? <laughs> what are we? Oh man, we're just hanging out. What is this world that we live in? Ah, wow. podcasting one? Yeah. It's really a way that we're trying to make a living. I don't know, man. What are we doing? Well, That's what a podcast is. Basically, people like listen to us talk to you, people like you guys for now. Right. People are like deep mad, man. You guys are fucking, you drink a lot, you hang out, you talk, and you fucking talk all funny, and you make people laugh, you should fucking record it. Right. So we did. Here we are. Yeah. So that's what a podcast is. Well, I mean, no. You're just hanging out with some microphones on and stuff. Basically, yeah. 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 For it's the most part. That's the goal. goal. Yeah. That's the goal. So. It's not like real to real. Okay. It's fucking. It's right. new age. Right. So this is being recorded digitally? Yeah. Fuck, I don't know if I can finish this interview, boys. <laughs> I don't know. If Mike, it's poison. <laughs> <laughs> so, Keith Hallett, man, what's. Um, What's going on with you? What's uh, what's new? I haven't been here in a year. Yeah. The CBC. Been about a year. Yeah. Remember that time? That was, that was a good time. time. Yeah, it was a time. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving me the hand signal about to talk about that uh, that time. No, no, we had a good time. 
We did. Yeah. So you can see it in our face. It's yeah. nice. If CBC we spent the day here? CBC spent the day here after Keith and I spent a night together. Yeah. No one was in it. Actually, I was the only one who was in like good shape that day. We were in good shape. Mm -hmm. well, she were in shape. Yeah, yeah. I, I hate it, but I, but I do love CBC. Thank yeah. you for doing yes. documentary. Right. And they did a great job, and they even hung out and watched the rest of the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they shut it down, and they, they, they stayed and watched the show. That's right, right there. Well, that was cool. I had yeah. to watch the I had to watch the, the, the Landing Two documentary, and I was like, oh, that's right. Yeah, I did mm -hmm. that. It was just a little, little foggy, but it was well, cool. It might shut the whole day. It's scary. Yeah. I didn't know it was going to be like that. Yeah, but. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. The it, carrot sticks were good, though. I remember that. Carrot sticks were good. Did they bring carrot sticks? No, I don't know. No, it was, it was probably party. another party. You were oh, like, okay. Jack and the brush. She fed everybody. No, day. no. I was thinking back to when I was a kid. Actually, there. It <laughs> wasn't that time. No, I was eight. It's a flashback. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, that was kind of a flashback yeah. kind of day, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we had a good night. Oh man, yeah, that was fun. So welcome back. Yeah, uh, good beer. Uh, so what's uh, you know what's new? What's happening with you? I know you that uh, you know you're here as a solo artist doing the Keith Hallett thing, the uh, the, the post-war blues. What do you call it that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, nobody's doing what you're doing, right? Is that fair to say? Jeez, I don't know. That's a tough. That's a big question. That's, well, that's, uh, a, that's a, it's not a question. It's just, it's just <laughs> kind of thing. Just mean. Just mean recognize. Um, do you yeah, want to, I'll well, I guess everybody's individual in their own way, but I guess, you know, a lot of influence, like pre-war blues. Maybe, yeah. You know? Yeah. So, and maybe, and maybe I, I don't know enough of the artists playing around, but I, I don't think anyone's playing and doing what they're doing. Um, you know, I'm a fan forever and pushing it, right? And so, um, I don't want to say that I hate the blues. Yeah, like, yeah. But I like the shit, man. <laughs> no. no, but I mean, you don't know what you know what I mean? Like it's um Well I just think a lot of like blues. I don't think blues I tend to gravitate towards it, but there's a lot of boring blues and Well it's kinda of like if someone was like, ah, I don't like country music and it's like, well what do you listen to? Do you listen to modern country radio? Yeah. Because that's not a really good snapshot. Pop of the right. So you think about commercial blues on like yeah. satellite blues radio or like the big blues festivals going on all over the world. Most it's very majority similar. of the artists, it's very similar there's, no, to the country. there's no real blues yeah. happening. It's all hokey right. and fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And that's just kind of a world that, like, you know, I honestly you stay it. away from. You, you're, you're like Trask in the recording process, just do it in your own way. No, well, that's maybe, it. Maybe possibly making it a little bit harder on yourself, but well, I, mean, I think, I don't know, I don't think it is any harder on yourself yeah. because at the end of the day, you're like, you know, staying true to what you believe in. Money and everything else comes after. So at the end of the day, you just got to be happy inside, you know. Well, if, you know, if I was trying to put some kind of show on that wasn't me, or I didn't feel good about it. I couldn't live with myself. Yeah. I hardly live with myself as I am now. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. I'm happy sometimes. <laughs> we'll edit that part. You just yeah. that person. Uh, I'm happy sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Happy. But I, I just, uh, I, I. I, you know, I push it all the time. Because there's no, there's, you know, there's a couple of people doing their own thing in the blues world and in, in the world. But no one's playing the way you're playing it. And uh, I mean, that means something to me. Uh, you know, and I'm thinking the rest of the fans too. But uh, you know, you're, you're, you're playing that way. It's definitely different than a lot of the other. And I, it's like the country shit. Yeah, yeah. So-called blues. Right. You know, I mean, and I mean, so I can't even. That. I can't even really like call myself blues in a way, you know? It's like, it's not really like, no, it's not something I'm like, what is it? Blues well, ish influence? Yeah, well, I, just, I think like, there's a lot of influence. Yeah. But oh, like, sure. I'm not specifically going, like, I'm going to start a blues show and I will play blues music, you know? It's just kind of like, I grew up playing a lot of old blues stuff and now I'm like, feel like I'm kind of coming into my own thing a little bit here and there. Sure. And it's just like, do you play, you play, uh, I did some recording last night at the show in Parkdale, and looking at it this morning, uh, three different videos. One one video, I think I want to say almost 19 minutes long. Um, there may be one break in there, but the song is like what? It's like three or four songs in one. Well, I guess I tend to 
I kind of just meld everything together. Like I'll, sometimes I'll play 40 minutes straight, but I'll play like 10 songs. But so yeah, it's so that's not normal in the blues world. Right. right? To me, that's you know I know, I know you're a dead man. So yeah. Right? Sure, yeah. So there's that part of it, right? Well, I, just, I just think it's something that I've kind of developed to keep myself interested. You know, because if I just kind of held myself to like a just kind of like a figure that I kind of work off of and I like stay within the parameters of that all the time, then I get bored. Mm -hmm. So basically I almost like purposely try to put myself in a musical situation where I'm out of my element or I'm confused and I have to figure out how to get out of this place that I've kind of and also wandered into. Confusing the audience. Right. right? So <laughs> now I'm now I'm in this room that I've never been in, kind of in my mind. And I have to like try to figure out how to get out. Maybe there's only a couple options, but like, or maybe there's no options at all, and you have to ride it out there's until no there's no options in the blues world, man. Well, I don't know. <laughs> until something, I don't know. I guess it's just me kind of exploring Dude. my own philosophy through sound. I guess. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's the way I picture it in my mind. So. You know, and I, I mean, you've been playing a long time, and it's it's you know the, the tunes you're playing now. Um, are different than when you started. I remember, you know, working the door at the Golden Gallery, and uh, and mom bring me down to play, right? And you weren't even of age to all right, play the show in St. Andrews, and then, and geez, man, you must have been like 16, like, yeah. you, you know, 15, 16, man, yeah, and sure. playing, and then like, when you were done, having to leave because it was a bar. Yeah. And so, you know, you listen, listen to that stuff that you kind of started playing, which was still old school blues for a young guy that age. To where you're at now, um, you can tell it's you know, your influences have grown. Yeah, quite a bit, right? totally. Yeah. Um, do you sometimes feel that because you've been playing a long time um, and, and people, you know, seeing you play, you played Harvest Jazz, you played, you know, some bigger shows, um, a certain way, do you feel like you have to fit into that same mold of playing that blues? No, not really. Like, well, no, not at all, actually. Just kind of like, I guess at this point I'm just not really concerned what people think, you know. Yeah. And I, I feel like that's the only real way to like be true to yourself. Because if you're worried how other people are going to perceive you, then are you really being your true self, you know? So basically, I just I do what feels right to me, and like I hope that my intention is good, you know, always. Yeah. And so yeah. well, that that's a great segue into genetics. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because oh, you mean you're gonna play too? No, I don't know. We're talking. Oh shit! Yeah, we yeah, will. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, but we're but, gonna ask you that question later. Okay, but that's cool. Talking about playing blues and then and then playing what you want and not really caring. So you got this new thing happening, Janowski. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a bit about Janowski. Three piece. Yeah, three piece started out as a two piece, probably a couple years ago. Sunday morning jam sessions? Or? Yeah, it was just kind of like we had shared jam space together in Fredericton. And it was just kind of one of those things where like sometimes we would just end up there at the same time. So we were like, hey, we want to just like get a little jam going. And I had at that time been like writing some material that I didn't really have a place for those songs in my own shows, like solo shows. Mm -hmm. So essentially, yeah, we just kind of got things rolling there. About a year later, we actually went into MRC in the Mike Studio and uh, recorded our album there over a weekend, straight to two inch tape. And, uh, in a huge room. In a huge room. <laughs> in the biggest room. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it was kind of like, yeah, yeah. Jeez, man, I, I'm going to kick myself in the ass for saying that in the room. Uh, no, that, uh, yeah, we had, we had a really good time uh, recording at MRC. And, so then we waited a little while to put the album out just because we wanted to like, you know, kind of book some shows around it and maybe, you know, try to actually promote it a little bit because I've never really Which done anything did. like that. Yeah, so we like try to put a little bit of steam behind it. Nothing too crazy. Like it's, it's more just a fun side project, you know. And so, I mean, you know, talk about you doing your own thing, but were you like nervous going into that and or presenting that being... You know, I know that I, I, I saw a gig sheet recently where Keith Allen was opening up for 
Janowski or something, right? Yeah, which yeah. are both the same bill. So it, you have people who like, you know, uh, no King Palette, um, but they hear he's got a band now, and they go to see this, you know, and, and, and expect uh, the traditional King Palette. Shit. Right. Um, what, what are they going to hear? Well, I think it's like, I mean, clearly. Was that nerve wracking? Was it, you know No, I mean? no, it wasn't really, because it was more exciting to me to, like, maybe be able to kind of, like, I don't know, present myself in a different space, you know? So, like, when we were starting out, it would be, like, a lot of, like, you know, we're doing, like, basement shows, because it's a heavier sound, you know? And, uh, you know, so just kind of, like, put on bills with kind of, like, yeah, trying to find, know. trying to find where you fit. Right, right. You know, or where that sound would kind of like be best kind of suited because it's not like I don't. I guess at the time I didn't see it as something where like you know you think your typical like blues dad audience or not blues well, dad, but well, you know well, like that's no, that's right. Why I asked the question. So like this this was kind of an opportunity to maybe like connect with my own generation a little bit more, you know, yeah. and have like a sound or an outfit that I could feel like. Because I, I just picture like. My father, like, oh, Keith Allen's got a new band. I'm going to check it out there. Right. I'm going to know you get there and just like, you know, so to people like us, man, who are into music in all kinds of, you know, different yeah, yeah, kinds of music, I, you yeah. know, I fucking love the record. Thanks. Uh, you know, so, but I just picture like, I, oh, I thought of that as soon as you started playing, you know, doing that. I was like, what about the people who hear that it's, you know, Keith Allen's got a band and then they go and they score an ad and they show up and they, play and it's like doom blues or what like what gloom doom what is it i don't know yeah we call it psycho boogie psycho boogie so it's kind of yeah i don't know it's just like and that's i often make up my own doom blues. So i have to so make it <laughs> dude you're the album it's not blues. sad it's no, no. Doom blues it's like okay yeah, it's, just, it's just kind of trash <laughs> loud you know i've got a big stack of old fender that I stack up the wall, <laughs> you should see him crank load, everything load up, and we just like lay it down, you know. And yeah. It's just like a it's just rock and roll, I guess. You can just say there, that. There's, a, there's, a, there's a growing up myself on punk music. Yeah, there's an there's album. A, you know, I feel, I feel like I was just I was angry at the time when I was yeah. writing that music, and I I just didn't feel like I could really do it with just me and a guitar, you know, some but of then, these songs. But then it's still the Keith Allen. Playing in the blues, like I, I, I feel like you took away some of those guys, the guys in the band. Some of those songs would transfer over into a solo show. Well, I mean, I can like every now and then I do play those songs, but the well, like the, the bass player Maddie is now in the group too. So like, but they're also like a huge part of the sound and the style. Like, I went from playing with drummers that were like really focused on like being able to swing hard and play like real traditional shuffles and like mm -hmm. you know all that kind of conversational stuff to playing with D-Bud who was more like he was playing in like kind of punk bands yeah, or like let's attack you know right? right so like I'm at a mile and I'm not playing with a drummer that wants to like swing you know I'm playing with a drummer that wants to fucking whack the drums yeah. you know so that also like made sense to me and then at a certain point it just with drums and guitar you know the, like there's kind of a lack of low end there even though I do yeah, do yeah, like the drone yeah. kind of thing on the bass so it was only natural for us to want to add bass to the outfit, and then our buddy Matty wanted to, or like we had asked him, he was happy to join. And we're all good buddies to begin with, so I used to play hockey with Matty when we were in like grade five. So I've known him a long time. So it was like, yeah, it was kind of perfect. And we're not like, you know, we probably do like 40, 50 shows a year, maybe. Like last year, <coughs> we might have done that. We did a tour at Ontario. Actually, we did a couple, and, and so it's like, it's like you know we're not we play like maybe a couple times a month in the summer we might play like five or six shows a month, but I primarily doing the solo stuff. You were but pushing it. To it yeah, yeah, we were. Time. We still wanted to you know like put it out there. You know, we yeah. made a bunch of tapes and we got T-shirts and pins. Yeah. And did the whole thing and like lived in a camper touring for a little over a month through Ontario, sleeping in parking lots and like. And so I'll get it out, you know. And so if summer's coming, are you, are you gonna push both Janowski and? Yeah, for you sure. Yeah. So far. Yeah, we got. Uh, well, we're doing uh, doing Flourish Festival in Fredericton, and doing Poly Fest, Zappy Fest, Zappy Fest, Perfect. And Hall. Perfect. Really? So, yeah, yeah. Nice. Nice. So and I'm also playing solo at Evolve and Folly. Oh, that's two. So it's like some a couple of the festivals, you know, where it's kind of 
I'm already there, so maybe I can play a solo set early in the day. Well, and then not, at night we can turn things up. I was going to say, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, crazy I'm, ex I'm excited because you know all those festivals in Maine, uh, you know, uh, besides that, you don't, you wouldn't really maybe see that type of tunes there, right? So, right. Yeah, maybe. I think that's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, evolves maybe a little bit more on the electronic kind yeah, of side of things, yeah. you know. And Folly, you know, there's still like some heavy groups there, but it's more like, uh, you know, it's kind of like a jam band kind of scene. A lot of folk music. I want to, I want to see you really fuck with some hippies at uh, <laughs> two in the morning and just like starting with what, genocide. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is this? Well, it's kind of funny because last year uh, we did play at Folly, but we like we can't we kind of came to him after they already had the festival book, and I had a solo show there, so I said like, hey, what do you think, like? We'll play a free set for you guys this year if you book us next year. I'm gonna be there already if the boys want to yeah. come and hang out. So essentially, what we did was we brought all of our stuff and we set up beside the porta potties. I didn't see you play all the garbage cans and the porta potties, and we just flipped a picnic table up on its side and stacked all the amps up, and we just like played a show beside the porta potties. And no one knew about it, but there was like this little buzz. Like a few people knew early in the day. And then by the time, like, you know, an hour before the set, people are like, are you playing? You know, we're like hauling here. I'm like, what's going on over here? And then, you know, by halfway through the set, there was like, you know, maybe 100 people hanging around the porta potties, <laughs> listening One, to us, going we'll, nuts. We'll, we'll, we'll play a track here on the podcast, but, uh, you know, once you hear it, uh, yeah, that, and, and you just hear, hear heard uh, Keith's description of where they played. Support bodies thrown down the ground, and yeah. you're, you'll, uh, it's very fitting. I think, uh, not, you know, not a, 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 a bad name. No, 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 for sure. No, I remember it's you're greasy. not, it's greasy, it's dirty, it's fortified, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I you're cool, like, I, I'm a fan. I remember, you know, partying in my house, and go, dude, man, you grew up on punk. <laughs> oh, god, I go, let's listen to this, but I got something for you. But it wasn't mass, it wasn't like it was really bad. Yeah, yeah, right. for sure. If you were like weird and like, you listen to a lot of punk, right? And metal and stuff? I was like, yeah, dude, I, we're good, man. I think so, I got a message the next morning saying Keith's got a punk band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to hear this, man. What did you guys do last night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's cool, man. I'm, uh, the brown I, acid. The brown <laughs> acid. <laughs> um, and, uh, Purple <laughs> pyramids. <laughs> Purple pyramids. <laughs> That's a new have to check my little bag in there. Oh, oh no, we're just yeah, no, totally. just, totally we're just, just kidding. Eating pizza and uh, drinking beers. Yeah. Uh, one drink. Yeah. Um, so, the, uh, but, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, oh, did you just let one rip? That was the dog. That was the dog. <laughs> well, gosh. Where is uh, that? Uh, okay, so wait, 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 wait. What was I thinking? Um, Totally distracted me. <laughs> you guys want a drink? Oh, we got one going. All right. Uh, I got a head brush right now. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what podcasts do to you, man. How about a, how about a rattler? We'd love to have Pump House Brewery sponsor the podcast. I'll take a rattler. Because we love crafty rattler. Ooh, juice beer. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I remember. So okay, then I'm gonna be done. Then we'll, we'll move on to some other shit. But. Remember, like, Buddy, when, when Keith was push, pushing Janowski, you know, clearly I, I, I'm a lover of all music, grew up listening to punk, so I, and I love Keith's stuff, so I was like, oh, I, I tend to gravitate towards, like, when two totally opposite uh, styles and types of music are, like, smashed together in one, yeah, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, when you hear, like, we were late, listening to lately, like, ah, uh, thrash grass, so, like, yeah. bluegrass, it's like, yeah. rah, 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 rah. <laughs> so, like, so like when I when I heard the Janowski stuff, I was like, man, this is cool. <clears throat> and Buggy you calling me up, sending me a text, dude, come play Shepardy, come play Parkdale, and, and like, you know, get, look, read the messages back, kind of hesitant, and then eventually you're like, dude, I don't, I don't feel comfortable playing this stuff in such beautiful venues. Like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's, like, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, we gotta, we just crank it up, man. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, it yeah. just it just wouldn't feel. It's, it. it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a portable. It's like uh, yeah. And then I, I got thinking. I was like, yeah, it's more like if you remember the old uh, Byron Freddy. It's more like a bugaboo type yeah, style. Yeah, yeah. Like, 
yeah, yeah. You know, your feet are sticking to the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like some guy smoking crack in the corner. <laughs> what a place, What the yeah. fuck you had on? It's not a good show there. No, no, I'm just joking. Oh, man. What yeah. is happening right oh, now? Oh, why? But, uh, but, <laughs> and I was, talking, I was like, it's okay. It says right on the bottom, it's like explicit content. I can okay. that box. We're going to add our key for some podcast. Ah. This is fun. Oh, shit. So this is, people are going to hear this. You're recording this. Yeah. They love it. Uh, I mean, and, uh, my heart is starting. Nah, we don't want to hear it. Oh, it was just brass pot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my heart is turned all red and flustered. Uh, Woo! Uh, yeah, okay, so. Awesome. But really, I own these bands, dude, so yeah. you do whatever you want. That's true. We can yeah. have a Janowski party. That's true. You know? We can do that some night. Right? Private party. We will. Invite yeah. only, maybe? No, we, we can, can do talk it. about this. We need to do it. We just yeah. do a heavy night and maybe have a couple acts, and then people will know, like, let them know, like, this is loud, heavy music. Yeah. You know? Or I guess we choose who we invite. So the way yeah. you market it and promote it determines who's going to come, right? right so right. if I put a, you know, do a gig sheet up or poster with which which is which, yeah, yeah, Janowski yeah. and like, you know, uh, I don't know, whatever, some some other heavy band, right? yeah, like nuclear, then people, you know, yeah. I mean, we're not that heavy. Like, we're not like a metal band. You know what I mean? Like, there's there's a lot heavier bands out there than us. But we're yeah. just like, you know, when you're kind of at that like crossover point. But yeah. like, volume is a big thing for us. Like, we are we're pretty loud. You know? Yeah, I watched so, your log, you know a bunch of amps up yeah, on the yeah. stage at Music New Brunswick Awards. I was just like, this is gonna be awesome. We usually have like about like, twenty or eh, 30, 25, 30 speakers on. Took them, like, took them, you know, took them all in the cabin. No like, joke. I've got six, ten. An hours. hour to lock this stuff up. And then a <laughs> 20, 20 minute show being set. I was like, oh shit. You have a single six wall like that. Whatever yeah, that super is. six. That I got two of those. Six. I got and a I quad. S- I want to bring the quad. You got a quad reverb? Yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah. six? I want to sell it. I got a quad. No. no, I've never seen another one. You got a quad. You want to sell it? No. I don't really care about the amp, but you don't want to sell it. <laughs> you want me to play it tonight? Then you sell it. <laughs> well, that's sweet. I'll sell my quad. Well, it's just that when I saw the Super 6, I've never, they're very rare. Yeah, it's a quad reaver. Quads, quads yeah. a twin force 12s. Yeah, and I had yeah. mine modded to be a 65 black base. Like I had it oh, reworked so inside. So yeah. yeah. All right, tech nerds. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh man, I like friends. Um, a musical number, perhaps. Yeah. So, um, who's gonna play? Someone wanna play? Probably Mike. I was gonna do, do you want me or I'll do the last one then that way. I'm gonna oh, just close cool. it down. This is the middle one. Yeah. Oh yeah, Mike. Yeah. Mike, Mike Trass. Yeah. Go, All right. So what tune should I do? <sighs> well, you played a really yeah. happy one to start. So I think. Uh, uh, I'll, uh, I'll do a. I'll do a happy tune. Trask, do a. For the for the radio show, <laughs> can't do that one. The radio show too, man. We had it all queued up. I was oh, like, did you have a tune for that? We went through two. I was like, man, I gotta put. I gotta. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do one. You probably. Oh God. Probably. I, I was going slow. I gotta pee. Probably. I was like, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do okay. federal pen because people want to hear that baby. Oh really? And we, and we, and we queued it. We, we got it all up. Right. Ready to go on the radio. And then we were like. There's a couple of points. points. We looked at each other. Ball. We looked at each other and it was all recorded and I've been in the program. And I was like, dude said no heavy metal, eh? And it got in like there's a part at the end there, really aggressive and that's Well, I guess a little it was a heavy time. Yeah. Dude. Heavy guitar yeah. I, I first moved to New Brunswick and I heard that on 1031. And it was right. I had stopped in the car and I'm like, what the fuck is this? This so sounds different for the radio. Yeah. So yeah. I had heard about you they long before that I met you. I appreciate that. your memory. Yeah, no how do you how how would that happen? Because you you'd hear radio play and there's all these compressed songs, same format, same same right. um, um, you know volume, and then your song would come on. I didn't listen to the radio at the time, yeah. so I didn't know. I just there was a guy named J.C. Douglas at Q104, and then he said I'll play it if you do an album. And, and so I did and, an and album and he played it, and, and then after that it got played from here to all over. It. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Like, I, I heard it like on heavy rotation on team. It was all the Q, the Q and Halley was the whole thing. Awesome. They, did, they did it all. They were the ones that that put it on, and I had done a contest in that. 
I won the contest, and then after that, uh, Jason Douglas, who was the program director, which was the right job, yeah, program director, and he said, if you do an album, I'll play it. And then, uh, back then, even back then, which was what, 14 years ago? It was long. 14 years yeah. ago? I was like 21 or 23, maybe, and they could do a little bit more then on their own. And now, they, they couldn't even do that much. Dude, I was surprised that I heard that on Team Three. But now he, they can't do much now for playing local stuff on those mass. Uh, I shouldn't say radio stations, but certain type of radio stations, they can't do a lot for choosing what they want to play. Yeah, no, uh, I know. And, and at the time, they couldn't do much. I think it was he played uh, me and the Stanfields, and we were all kind of. And Matt and Joel were already being played for right. a few years, but even Matt was relatively new and small when they were playing them. Yeah. And then the Stan Fields and me, J.C. Douglas and those guys started playing that stuff. Yeah, that's why. You don't you don't hear Stan you won't hear that Stan Fields on you know much radio. No, but back then J.C. was doing it, and, and, but he couldn't do that now. I don't think. At least that's the last conversations I had with them. They were like, we can't. I think he, did, he did. He did it, and then there was a little window still at that those years but it was when I shouldn't say that and the stations are good stations and all that it's just the way it works they, <laughs> they uh, really should be in my opinion they should be playing a lot more local stuff so maybe content losses thank god for uh, right radio exactly right so you I know, listen to that station all the time right and uh, you know and, and they can like they, you know we're, we gotta show start recording all the Wednesday we've got uh, some episodes uh, recorded 8 to 9 Wednesday night 20 to 9 10 tomorrow FM and uh, you know, you don't find radio stations who are like, you're programming out. I'm like, I, I put up a little thing. I was like, yeah, I'd like to be on your radio station. Right. You got any experience? No, but I, I know, I like music. My ears like music, so, um, and I know a lot of music. So uh, but, yeah, they're like, put them together and send it to us. And like, right away, they're like, yeah, dude, we want to, we want to have one. So that, I'm excited about that because it, 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 I, I think that the East has uh, an insane amount of, yeah, of, of uh, musicians and artists. And not being from LA, I'm from Ontario. And when I came yeah. out, I was like, holy shit. Like, just the sheer amount of talent that's out here that just never seems to... And then, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, promoters and, and, and uh, uh, agencies see Canada as, you know, Montreal over, right, west. And so, I yeah. just like... So, we're excited, man. Uh, you know, we're going to have a platform to be able to continue uh, promoting the New Brunswick music scene, so that's exciting. Right, and uh, way back, J.C. Douglas, who still works at uh, another station in now, in now is it? Those guys were like, uh, J.C. was just a guy who'd play anything he thought was good. Yeah. And, he, and I don't know if he, like I said, they did have a window then, but he was supporting local stuff, and uh, he still does. As far as I can tell, but I don't think he can in the same way. But you would, yeah. I mean, but, uh, you, 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 there was a couple songs that were getting, you know, heavy rotation, mainstream play. Well, not only that, but that's not that you have a chorus, which, which was <laughs> like, the funniest of all my old band was that it was a, I wrote in grade 11. That is real. Really amazing. It's just a story. And the first song he played was called Don't Touch the Money. It was the first song he played. And it didn't get picked up as much elsewhere, but. Even that song had like a, I don't know, I don't know, solos or numbers as long as I think, but probably 40, 30 second, 40 second solo. Yeah. In the middle with double guitars, and, <laughs> and JC was like, just like that, it was the single. And that was a, it was just so weird at the time. So it's good that there's, I think that the bigger stations maybe can't do that as much now, but still with the, uh, the Amherst station, I can never remember the name. And then in Howie, there's Seaside FM. It's just similar, but what's like, happened is it's those nonprofit, community-based radio stations yeah. that work their asses off to to raise their own funds and aren't, uh, you know, uh, spearheaded by, you know, uh, an organization or mm. uh, the man, the right. corporation. And so they have to play their Canadian content, and that's it. They right. just they right. make, and they make up their own rules. But I think that those big stations too. There's a the thing about them is is they are. They're playing music. But why am I hearing ACDC 10 times a day? Well, because a lot of people that are alive want to hear that all the time. 
and they're and they're catering to them, and those are important people. And uh, no, but they're older guys and, and girls that love that stuff, and they want to hear it still. Yeah. And I think that they're just as mad. Some of the people that love the uh, old stuff they're playing are just as mad like that. I have no idea what a new rock band is. You know? Just a big one up. But like to say a, a new rock band, whatever. Uh, when they're playing, I think some of those older people that love ACDC and stuff are just as upset. Yeah. Because they're like, I don't want to hear this new band. Yeah. So, uh, so I think if they were playing uh, new stuff, people would be frustrated because they listen to these stations for that reason. And I don't think you can hold it against them because a lot of those people that like ACDC have been working jobs for a long time. Mm -hmm. they don't well, that's, I think it's I guess I just, I just, people, right? no, and, that, and that stuff's important too, but I guess I just, I come from a different mind frame of, of, of wanting to hear new art and, uh, and, uh, you know, and promoting. I mean, oh, ACDC has a, a thousand, hundred million, billion dollars, what? you know. But and I'm not saying that they're wrong either, I just think no, that's no. why those stations are Yeah, and, and those, those stations are also owned by massive corporations that own oh, yeah. a bunch of radio corporations stations. So it's like, five it's kind of just that. what's available to the people. Like when you go to the superstore and open up the freezer, yeah. well, the products that are available, yeah. you know what I mean? Like the, it's it's easily accessible because right. they have it, right? Yeah, yeah. They sure. can choose to yeah. have other stuff because yeah. I know it's, it's big bad. business is what it is, yeah. you know? But then you look at like university radio stations, you know, yeah. they're the ones that are actually promoting local artists yeah. Yeah. that maybe don't, have, maybe haven't even played a show before. But they're willing to give them an opportunity to have a platform to get their music out to people. Yeah, they're not so. concerned. They don't have any other, you know. Yeah. I think at that point you're going to still have to look for it though, because most people are going to want to hear, like you were saying, it's that same thing all day where it's just that comfortable. It's that nice warm zone of the stuff you kind of know. Yeah. It's enough in the background. Whereas if you listen to a college radio station, you're going to hear. It's like a community radio station. You're going to hear metal for an hour, and then you're going to hear, you know, hip hop for an hour. Yeah. And I guess, a lot yeah. of people don't want to sit and listen through that, so that's... And now I mean, people, people, I, I guess, I, again, maybe I'm probably cut from a different cloth because I like all music, right? Mm -hmm. And I like to experience and, 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 and hear new music, right? Where, like, something new comes on, or, like, you know, a father or an older crowd, they're going to quickly change it because it's not recognizable. Yeah. yeah. Right. So then how do we... Think well, people are afraid of cheating. I want to rock! <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Alright, so we're giving a song from Mike. Yeah, yeah man. So and, uh, probably not that open. No, I was going to say. Are you going to play it, Mike? It, oh, in the end, we didn't put, we didn't, we didn't put that on. I think there was a part of it that was like really loud and crazy. It goes, hell, this was hell. It might have been goddamn. 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 Right? We're like, oh, it's not. Yeah, no, exactly. So anyway, right. we went with the. We went with the. a version I tracked. And, and no, 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 that's no. not to me. I did way. another album in Louisiana, and, and I, I tracked that album, that song there. I'd like yeah, to. I could, I could get you that kind of See, it, it, No, yeah. that's the thing here. Yes. I, I, I took a step back. But well, I love that too, that version too. So for me, I'd rather you play that anyway if you want to. Yeah, but I'd rather play something that. that that is recent and that is you oh, now. And, and so I took a step back. Well, I know I, I was like, why am I playing that? Why am I playing Federal Pet? I'm playing that because I know that it'll appeal to the masses listening more than Mike's newer stuff or a new song because it's, because it's, it, it's, 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 still a, it's still a better song than a lot of songs I write now. <laughs> so I, 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 I long to write a story like that. And I can't ever do it. You know, I wrote that story yes, in one class. And that was okay. anyway. I can't, but I'm just saying, uh, for me personally, I still think it, it's a it's a good story, and, and I try sometimes to do that. No chorus, one chord. And all that ends up, I can't, I can't, it's hard for me to repeat it. So for people to say, like, can you play better with Ben at this show or night? It's like, well, it's still, I can see why you like that tune. Cause I'm not saying I like the tune, but I'm saying, it's a, people, I mean, the, the, it was on the radio, right? Do people, people want to hear that? And you, do you are you like, I don't know, I don't know. I sell them in the position. It's like Kurt Cobain, it smells like Teen Spirit, you don't want to play it, you know? Well, when I play Musket Out there, or where is it where I'm from? Yeah. There's a big festival out there now. Finally, called Trunk 7, someone's finally doing something in that town. Uh, 
uh, inclusive. And uh, I go play there and I play that song. Yeah. And I play it as close to I, as I can to what we did on that album, as, as close to I comfortably can because I was a young boy when I did that album. And That's I, crazy. And I want to do it the way I do it, but because I think like uh, it matters to me that like those people give a shit that I'm at. They don't have to care right now. So I don't I don't know when they come to them. <laughs> so they, they don't have to care where I come from when they show up to the show. If it means I want to play a tune, I play a tune for them that they yeah, yeah. that moves them still. And because maybe they just don't have the time to listen to the new stuff and that's cool if they don't have that time. Yeah. And so I do federal event there. No one's ever like But uh, wait, sitting here Chef you have recording this, right. you open up the door, you look out, you can actually see the penitentiary. Right. I mean, in, in Norchester, right? So, yeah. you're cool if I holler out tonight. Hey, you're Oh, yeah. We're next to the penitentiary. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I won't do that. But <laughs> I've been thinking about it all, all morning. Like, he's got to play that because we're next to the penitentiary. My old man, my dad's like, you should play that to the local jam. <laughs> you know, so he, he, in Muscadon, the last time I was there, they were like, I saw that new video you did, man. That was cool. So they're, they're, they're into it. Yeah. They're watching and they're not, I think they get it. You know, I did that Mud Hill stuff and then yeah. change. Yeah. And then when I changed, they were, no one was, uh, the same avenue wasn't interested in what I was up to. Well, I, 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 I feel like, I feel like I must get out of my like Sir yeah. DC and they like And I don't even mean the people, I mean more the mediums, you know, the radio yeah. stations where they couldn't, when I put out a solo album that was recorded on Real Real from 1954, <laughs> So it wasn't personal. Cool. There was no, and then people that must get out are like, sometimes they don't know. You know, that's a good thing about the internet now is now they can know. But for a few years there before Facebook and stuff was so popular, I found people nobody knew you were doing albums. At least now they can know. Right. I mean, I I, I like to see see the girls in the transition of artists, and I like I, you know I like federal pen, and I like what you're doing now. Man. Um, right. What would you, how would you describe your music now that you're playing? Because oh, I, someone asked me the other day, what's my jazz? And I always come up with these fake things, <laughs> like for Keith or for whoever, man. Well, it's, uh, it's folk art. And that's what I called your tune. Oh, right. Right? So rem reminiscent of, of, of Dylan, but super artsy-ish. Mm -hmm. And that, that's my own interpretation of it. It right. doesn't hold to anything or mean anything. What would you, how, what would you consider your, your you know, your latest stuff? I don't know, I mean, for me, it's like always based around the, the lyrics. That's what all, all my songs are based around first. And uh, so I guess in, in that sense, like, uh, I don't know, you should ask Adam now, or you know Adam? Yeah. You should ask Adam what my music's called. Why is he all good? Adam just, uh, he's been like uh, my right hand man, but like, Seven years now, and he kind of tells me sometimes what I'm doing. So for me, I, so don't, I don't know what it, what it is. Maybe. I, I would, like Bob Dylan, and uh, okay, and I, I, can I, hear, I can hear all kinds of music. And my new, I like to try to do rock. But I've always seen that people thinking.